Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milenia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alfredi and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Ba. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. And the news tonight, Fiji First campaign continues to attract hundreds. Party receives confirmation on candidate nominations. And Fiji elected to the UN Human Rights Council. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Sagar. A huge crowd once again gathered at the Fiji First Party's third family fun day that was held at the FSC grounds in Rakiraki today. Supporters made the most of the opportunity to not only meet the party's candidates, but also know about their policies. Philippe Naikaso has more. What we've done. The ruling party leader once again highlighted the number of initiatives and policies they have implemented during the tenure in government. We brought you equality, and that's what counts most in this world. That's what we did. We got rid of inequality, we brought equality, and now you can be, we given everything that we give to the Toke, we also give to the indo -Fijian. we give to the disability, we give to the poor, we give to the vulnerable. We give to everyone. It was surely a family fun day for the party, as the support shown by those that turned up was overwhelming for the provisional candidates. Very electric atmosphere, a very engaging atmosphere, but also an atmosphere where nobody told any tall tales, nobody lied, uh, and everybody spoke the fact, everybody spoke the truth, and that's essentially what we are following. Majority of people that have spoken to FPC News say the reason why they're supporting the Fiji First Party is because they believe in the policies and also the leadership shown by the Fiji First leader, Borenge Bainamarama. Because the Fiji First Party is helping everybody in Fiji. I think they are really doing good jobs and plenty of stuff they have uh, done regarding previous governments. Towards me, it's really good. I think, uh, everyone knows well that uh, Fiji First is uh, one of the... Uh, government that uh, help us a lot and everything uh, every needs all the citizen uh, Fiji so Fiji I uh, came here to support uh, Fiji Fest. The party is also confident of a good turnout at its Funday in Korovoto Nandi tomorrow. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. It has been confirmed that 50 candidates for the Fiji First Party will stand in next month's general election. Unfortunately, only Nazia Ali did not make the cut as she did not meet one of the requirements. Anna Ravula reports. It's an unfortunate situation for former provisional candidate Nazia Ali. However, she says this is not the end for her. You know, I accept that it's the law and if I don't qualify, then I have to accept it. You know, um, there's no way around it. Um, it's sad that I can't contest the election, but next time around, I'll make sure that I'm, I'm in the country for more than 18 months. Ali says she will continue her work with the party. I've been nominated to be um, the youth representative and I think, you know, it doesn't take away from the fact that I'll still be representing youth issues. The party's general secretary says Nazia Ali will still play a huge role. You know, the wonderful thing is that Nazia is fully committed to the values of Fiji First and she is going to stand uh, with all the other candidates in respect of putting the message out we're going to stand as a formal candidate, but she'll be out with our campaigns. Saad Kahim says they will need to replace Nazia and already has someone in mind. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Meanwhile, FBC News has also gathered that a nominated candidate of the National Federation Party has also been disqualified. We have tried to get in touch with Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim and NFP leader Professor Biman Prasad, but this has not been successful. While the NFP officials have said they are still waiting for a response from the Supervisor of Elections on their candidate nomination submission. The Fijian Elections Office will open this weekend in case any independent provisional candidate wishes to file their nomination form. Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim says they are expecting two political parties to file nominations with them by Monday. Sanim says they have until 12 p.m. to do so as no late nominations will be accepted.
uh, the political parties that are left, uh, Hope and uh, Unity Fiji have informed us that they will be able, will be lodging their nominations on Monday with us. The Fijian Elections Office will publish the list of approved candidates on Monday night and it will come in the Tuesday's paper. Fiji has become the first Pacific Island nation elected to the United Nations Human Rights Council. Fiji received 187 votes, the second highest among all candidate countries, and only one vote shy of the highest number of votes overall. Prime Minister Varenga Bandimarama says the 187 votes are a powerful recognition of Fiji's unwavering commitment to the fundamental rights of all global citizens. Benny Marama says it is also testament to Fiji's tremendous progress where we have enshrined a vast array of human, political and socio-economic rights in the 2013 constitution, bringing security, opportunity and dignity to Fijians. Pritika Pratap reports. Fiji is among the 18 new members elected through a secret ballot into the Human Rights Council for a period of three years starting from January. So this is a very, very significant event. It is a win for the government, for civil society, for National Human Rights Commission, but also for all ordinary Fijians and Pacific small island developing states. Fiji took part in a pledging event in Geneva with civil societies, including Amnesty International and the International Service for Human Rights. In the pledging event, Fiji opened itself up to scrutiny and answered questions on our human rights record and priorities for membership. This basically means that you know we have to be very active uh, in the next three years in, in ensuring that we fulfill our own human rights obligations but also show leadership uh, internationally. Attorney General Ayasayed Kayum says the successful bid is an affirmation of Fiji's unprecedented investment in the growth of social wages to realize the socio-economic rights of all Fijians. First time a small Pacific Island country has been appointed to the Human Rights Council. You listen to Bhiman Prasad, listen to all the other characters, all of them saying, oh, there's no rights in Fiji, no human rights, not recognizing the enormous strides that the Fiji First Government has made, but the world recognizes that. Countries needed a minimum of 97 votes to get elected to the council. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Still to come, grant applications didn't meet criteria. And can the construction industry to work on improving image details after the break? Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagarong, and Bula Fib, Nabondo and a Seri. I have a sit size, a lambasa. Six people have been questioned and released by police in relation to the vandalising of Fiji First Party's campaign billboards. Fiji First billboards were vandalised in Kalekana and Vungalay in Lami and Rewanga in Suva. Police say the investigation also continues in relation to an attempted break-in at the party headquarters at Brown Street in Suva. No arrests have been made so far. Some of the applications for the first home purchase program that were received by the Housing Ministry did not meet the required criteria. Permanent Secretary for Housing Joshua Wycliffe revealed there were issues of due diligence. That's why the applications were rejected. Anna Ravulo reports. The first home purchase program was introduced in August and since then the Housing Ministry has received 2,000 calls from people inquiring about the initiative. In some cases, um we would come across a situation where we're not too uh, aware of whether that's a first home or not. And there's a bit of due diligence. So then they, this application is sent back for due diligence. So we make sure that uh, the right people get the grant and, you know, the, it doesn't end up with the wrong people. Joshua Wycliffe says the ministry vets all applications in a transparent manner. 
once in a way we probably want uh, we want to know further information on the income because that's another critical criteria in deciding the right niche and the right segment of our societies um, society makes use of this first home so if we have any reasons to believe that we want to do a bit more due diligence in terms of household income then we go back for that Vula Shaw says through this program they aim to increase home ownership it's a good initiative that government has introduced and I urge people to be part of it so they can own a home that's the a home which will still be there for you and your family when you retire. The ministry says 70 applications were processed in the last two months but only 61 were approved. Anna Rovulo, FBC News. Improving their image is top priority for the Construction Industry Council. The council, which opened its new office in Samambula Suva earlier this week, believes getting rid of the negative image associated with the industry will help them move forward. Kritika Kumar reports. Dishonesty by a handful of people has cost the construction industry a great deal. We're law-abiding enough. Most people are law-abiding enough. It's just a few that are not law-abiding on us. I mean, to run away with a, with, a, with a developer's money or something is fraud. It really is fraud. Construction Industry Council Chief Executive Vijay Naidu is urging contractors to do their work honestly as there is already skills shortage in the industry. We could encourage those people to come, get a skill and get a job in the industry uh, because the industry is crying out for skilled labor force. Naidu is also advising the public to choose contractors wisely. You'll come to our website, you'll search the website to see if a builder is licensed, and then you'll choose the builder so that you can sit back comfortably and say that I've got a licensed builder, an experienced person with good reputation who's going to build my property. The council will be pushing for all construction companies to get a license so they will be able to monitor the work done by them. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Fijians in Lambasa town can now access free and faster internet services following the free Wi-Fi hotspot launch today. Members of the northern public turned up in large numbers to witness the event. Wallace Director Robert Khan says the aim of this initiative is to benefit Fijians for study purposes and to connect them to the rest of the world. These free Wi-Fi spots which uh, Wailisi is implementing on behalf of the, um, of the government's digital st uh, strategy, um, it's here to empower the people, it's here to benefit the people. And the people of Lambasa will now be able to gain the same benefits as the other places where we have already launched free Wi-Fi, which is free Wi-Fi for 60 minutes. We encounter mental health every day. Whether you are dealing with stress, a divorce or a natural disaster, it's important to learn what's affecting your health. World Mental Health Day was commemorated yesterday and the focus is on thinking better. Eleanor Trangaivu reports. If we look after children's brain development in their first five years, we will be breeding a better thinking population. However, according to the National Advisor NCDs, the trend in Fiji is worrying. We are very smart in teaching now, making babies. We are not very good in looking after them in the first place. That's what I'm finding from today. We can make 20,000 babies a year, no problem. But looking after them for the first five years, it's a challenge for me. According to Dr. Ismeli Tukana, in order to think well, we have to concentrate on brain development in the first five years of birth. World Mental Health Day was celebrated in Lambasa today with displays from various organizations that deal with youths and mental health issues. The theme for World Mental Health Day is Young People in a Changing World. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. Up ahead in sports, major setback for flying Fijians. And tough competitions expected at bowling championship, this and more coming up. Dola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coral Coast, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM. 
All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic. major blow for the Fiji Airways flying Fijians ahead of their northern Europe tour next month as robust winger Nemani Nandolo has been ruled out for four months. Nandolo will undergo a knee surgery next week. Nandolo's injury is also a major setback for his club Montpellier as important matches loom in for the European Cup and the top 14. Meanwhile, Timo de Nangusa, who also plays alongside Nandolo for Montpellier, will not be featuring for the side this weekend due to injury. Defending National Open singles bowling champions Litia Tikoisuva and Suren Prasada again the hot favourites to retain their title. The tournament started today at the Suva Bowling Centre with Tikoisuva and Prasad stamping their dominance early in the women's and men's category. Ali Kimbia with the story. Labelled as one of the tough bowling competitions so far this year, the National Open singles championship will not be easy for the favourites. But it was not easy. Uh, my opponent started off very well, but uh, in the end I won the first game, so the tournament won't be easy anyway. Prasad won his first match over Ben O'Connor 21-12, while Litie Tikoisuva won her first game beating Maria Tella 21-5. It's uh, really anyone's game um, uh, in terms of bowls. You cannot uh, underestimate anyone. Organizers of the competition are anticipating a close tussle during the final tomorrow. Ali Kimbia, FBC Sports. The Fiji Under-15 AFL team has started its preparation for the Oceania Cup next month. Today, a large number of players turned out for the trials at Albert Park in Suva. Ali Kimbia once again. AFL players wanting to make the team for the Under-15 Oceania Cup were closely monitored during their trials today. They're the best Under-15 boys in the country have come together to hopefully be selected for the national team, which will compete in December in the Inter uh, Oceania Cup against Nauru, Tonga and Vanuatu. Players from as far as the Western Division attended the trials and Highfield says they will select the best for the tournament. You notice the boys behind us, a lot of them have had a lot more experience than in the, in the past few years um, and their skills are just, are just a lot better than they used to be. Highfield says it is vital that they prepare well and players will need to prove themselves. They're learning how to kick the ball, they're learning how to handball, but they're also learning how to read the play and, and understand where the ball's going and, and be ready there and, and play, play more like AFL than like rugby. The Oceania Cups kicks off next month. Ali Kimbia, FBC Sports. The Silver Primary School Athletics team will do whatever it takes to claim the annual Chow Games later this month. Teachers and parents took time out of their busy schedule today to conduct time trials for their athletes. With top schools like Veuto and Yetsen, the officials are confident of a strong outing. Team manager Polia Sikoroi says they have been going out of their way to train the athletes. Preparation in school base and after this we uh, uh, prepare together as a team for the upcoming uh, national game. Wellington has sealed their place at the ITM Cup semi-finals with a 34-10 win over Taranaki in their final regular season match last night. The result means Taranaki will be relegated to the second tier championship next season. Here are the highlights from the match. Oh, we're trying to get rid of it. It's been lost for it from Taranaki. Charge try! Go, go, go! Here goes Warwick Lemur, trick play at line out time, and the world sits over for Taranaki. The two playmakers, the two try assisters, 9 and 10 for Wellington. Not a... to leave it instead. Now the kick over the top from Renata, beautifully positioned. Sliding in and over, that is a wonderful it's set for Lemur. Just get a real sense of the urgency straight through the middle goes Tuitama. Bonus point for Wellington, and they're under... off the toe. Lousy again involved. There's Coles. First touch is a goodie on the five meter line. Pongo. He stretches, he reaches, he scores. When the Kiwis run out onto Mount Smart Stadium tonight, it will be their first test against the Kangaroos in New Zealand since 2014. 
But NZ Rugby League is worried poor ticket sales are putting the future of trans-Tasman clashes in New Zealand at more risk. Cloudy conditions with showers experienced of the Lao and Lamaiviti group today, Davyuni and nearby islands as well. The eastern parts and the interior of the other larger islands also experienced showers. Looking at the west, scorching sun with temperatures rising as high as 34 degrees. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, early morning drizzled, drizzles followed by humid conditions. And up north, fine conditions prevailed mostly. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, rough seas and moderate southerly swells. For the tides, high tide will be at 9.39pm with low tide at 4.05 tomorrow morning. Sunrise will be at 5.38. As for tomorrow, it will be fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and thunderstorms. As we look further on to Monday, you can expect much of the same conditions. Recapping the main stories, Fiji First campaign continues to attract hundreds. Party receives confirmation on candidate nominations. And Fiji elected to the UN Human Rights Council. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, La this week we're asking should every Fijian fly a flag for Fiji Day Week? Visit our FPC website to answer. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. And that was your FPC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Min. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Singa Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jack's Nursery. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nursery. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot.